Hey everybody, this is Son of Beast, and this video I have already done was the Braden, Braden one of the Boldy Brother, and I've done the other one as well of Brittany. But don't worry, because those videos I haven't got a chance was talking about the Phyromaniac brother named Brody, and the other kid that almost died 18 times was Brenner. And as you basically noticing before, I noticed that Stone Yoshi had reacted to one of each, but now, when the wait is over for me, I'm guessing I'm about to be doing it so far to get right into the reaction of Haminations. So, I'll go back to this video right in between to start with the sibling first, and his name is Brody. Not the one that you're talking about from Brody Animates, but this Brody from Haminations that I've already subscribed to. And that being said, let's talk about and see what happens with Brody, as the Phyromaniac starts to appear. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm hoping this would be a funny one, too. Don't cut me mind. Anyway, let's get right into this. Enjoy the show, for me. Hi, welcome to Bryson's Cooking Show. Today we are cooking cereal. First add cereal, then- But Bryson, what if I like pouring the milk first? Um, actually, it's supposed to be like, Take out a cereal bowl, and then add cereal, and then pour the milk in. I mean, come on, guys. I'm not always just a fool you want. Little As I was saying. Oh, oh. Did you actually did this before? <laughs> um, did you actually just do that one over here? I was not mentioning before. Wow. It looked like sushis. For real. First add cereal, then milk, and voila, we've got cereal. Uh-oh. What? <sighs> wait, wait, no. <laughs> the gates of hell open wide to receive thy soul. Oh, now damn. submit thyself to unending torment. No, please, I'm a good boy. Uh-huh. Oh, no. <laughs> ah! Bo, please save me. Hey, dude, what are you doing? You didn't give me any treat. <laughs> Ah! Bryson's cooking show has been cancelled. Please go to home. Nah, kidding. Hi, I'm Bryson, and I once started a grease fire in my house. And believe it or not, this is not the first fire that the Haminations family has endured. Let me start at the beginning. All right, so I basically noticing that it had never happened here before in my house here, too. But, you know... Basically, it, we're safe for now. <laughs> Let's go with your story. Now, almost all these stories revolve around one sibling, the pyromaniac of the family, my oldest brother, Brody. Now, before I decimate my brother's reputation, slander his name permanently, and ensure that he's never allowed within 500 feet the, the of life <laughs> ever again, let me just preface with this. I love you, Brody. <laughs> oh, man. I love you, sweet beast. Our journey begins when Brody was three years old. I remember it like it was yesterday. Except I wasn't even born yet. Yeah, right. Absolutely right. So, that's because you were not exactly not been born yet. He was first before you come in. So, I guess you're gonna have to wait until the next couple months or the years they're coming in by. So, gotta have to wait for that. My family was visiting our grandparents and uncles, and my uncle Mark decided to have some bonding time with Brody. It remains a mystery to this day what Uncle Mark was thinking, but he decided to teach Brody how to use a lighter what? and how to lock doors. Two essential skills for any three-year-old, obviously. In one fell swoop, this knowledge transformed Brody from a harmless toddler to a dangerous fire hazard capable of burning the house down. <laughs> I, I could see the reaction. I mean, all that lock skills, three-year-old requirements. <laughs> That's not true, right? Obviously. In one fell swoop, this knowledge transformed Brody from a harmless toddler to a dangerous fire hazard capable of burning the house down. Oh, wait, so he was absolutely going to burn the house down? Jeez, that is not going to happen like that. Man, you know... It's not going to change anything like you always did. So you basically got to watch out for yourself. <laughs> T 
Taco Bell. It's the worst. Brody put his knowledge to use immediately. He locked himself in grandma's room, hid under the bed, and started melting the wax under there. The bottom of the bed began to burn, and the wax started melting down onto the carpet. What? For, for real? I mean, that's what he was absolutely doing now? For real? I mean, okay, that has that nothing to do about that. And I, I don't know, why would you do that here, Brody? The guy that you definitely uh, wanted to, like, just burn everything down. I mean, he just really wanted to do this. Well, I'll tell you what. Doing with matches for little kids, it's very could be very dangerous. Did you know that one of the kids have absolutely have died from from playing with matches and basically have noticing because they are going near and touching things? I mean, most parents absolutely just do is they try to get their kids from sticking out with their with their lighters and tell them not to touch it. And you know, it's very dangerous to yourself, you know. It's not a very easy way to do this. But as for now, when the kids are starting to become young adults, I mean, they could take out the lighter and then just light the candle. Well, basically, I've done matches, though. I mean, I basically have done it the other way. So basically, when I do this, I just light it up for the candle and then I just do it for, for someone's birthday. And basically, it's really, like, cool to do that. But now... What I basically do is I try to like keep it turned off so that way when there's the next birthday that hits, I'll tell you what, it might be me. I mean, one of my parents would definitely do that. I mean, they could definitely do this. And if there is someone else's birthday, I mean, I like the candle for them. Just, just saying, you get the fact. The family smelled the smoke and ran around the house looking for Brody. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Oh jeez. What's the procedure, What's the procedure everyone? What's the procedure? Stay Oh but my the God. door was locked. When they finally got in, they saw Brody with a lighter in hand standing next to a burning bed. They put the fire out quickly as Brody watched. Even though I wasn't there, I can imagine Brody grinning to himself because born inside him at that moment was a flame that would never go out. Uh -oh. This was the beginning of a lifetime of pyromania. My parents were rightfully mad at Uncle Mark and years later they got back at him. Uncle Mark's son was very young and my parents were visiting. Hey, little guy, come here. I'm going to teach you how to use a lighter. Oh, my. No! 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 Oh, God. Skip it up and down. God dang it. Dang it. Why would you have to do that? Oh, basically, I was not even noticing. Uh, okay, so that's what happened. He was burnt, burnt and raised. And so this is definitely very haunting the dreams out of it. And I could basically tell that, that those eyes are very creepy. I mean, you're not going to let them know what's going to happen to you if something bad happens. Mark's son was very young and my parents were visiting. Hey, little guy, come here. I'm going to teach you how to use a lighter. No, no, no. no! no! <laughs> Duh. I, I don't even basically remember this right now. I mean, someone blows up and it's like, kaboom! Well, basically, you don't see that. Does your family have a pyromaniac, or are you normal? Well, uh, basically, my, my parents basically thought I'm normal. But I'll tell you what, I've never done anything. I thought I was going to cook for something that, like, it's mac and cheese. And basically, I was definitely noticing when I was going to turn it on, I was basically doing this. And behind the story of my thought of how this happened, I was going to bake to make something like it's mac and cheese thing and open the box so I could definitely have it for dinner. And I thought I was going to learn how to cook it. But my dad just told me that it is very, very dangerous to go near that, that flame, you know. Basically, most of the kids were definitely wanting to take some food out. I mean, they definitely would want to cook it. But I was afraid that I was going to get burned. But thank you to the my father, Papa Beast. You know, he would explain not to go near the stove. It's an ouch for a moment. Now you will never do that again. Well, basically, I was going to able to cook something. But now I basically learned how to cook mac and cheese. I mean, it was so much better. But I need to get used to it with some, some more skills. So probably, I mean, I'm more into like a pastry chef, normally like a baker. But I'm more like into cooking some other foods in between. So I'll just try to like do the best thing as I could do. It's just that simple. You get it. My main goal is to blow up. 
<laughs> oh, oh my god, that is balmy. And what I basically noticed that I was never noticing it's because and goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> okay, that is just nothing what I was basically noticing about. So yeah, Brody, what the heck? The next incident happened one year later. Brody was four, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Except I was still not born yet. Okay, I just don't know, understand this, but kind of like a little difference with that mean. I mean, he's still not born yet. Gosh. Mom was outside the house talking to a friend, and Brody was inside unattended. He decided that he wanted a hot dog. He had seen our parents use the microwave before and thought, Oh, I just need to put it in the microwave, hit a couple buttons, and hit start. So that's oh exactly what he did. But he unknowingly set it to over an hour. Oh no. A while later, Mom's friend noticed smoke coming out of the windows in the house. Mom ran inside in a panic and found Brody with his hot dog. I tried to make a hot dog, but all I got was a piece of poop. <laughs> Your hot dog! What the frick? You you must have been put in a disaster already. And it looks like that my mother is saying, Son, what the heck have you done with your hot dog? The hot dog was reduced to a flaming carbon crisp, burnt to the very core. And that's how my family house almost got burnt down by a hot dog. Then the next year, when Brody was five, he got glasses. This time, I remember it clearly. Of course. Except I still hadn't... <laughs> Dang it. Oh my god. Are you gonna get existed or not? Born yet. Once again, he was left unattended in the kitchen. Brody found a lighter, sat on the counter, and began lighting it over and over. You know, I, just, I just don't like it when this happens. No, for entertainment. Then he thought, I wonder if my glasses are fireproof. He slowly began to raise the lighter closer, oh, and don't closer do it. to his face. And the lens cracked. Okay. You know you're not supposed to do that on your glasses, you know that. Mom! What? What was that noise? Did you break your glasses? Yes! <laughs> God dang, what, what, what's up with that thing? I mean, <laughs> I don't know what she's saying, but it's... <laughs> you see that face over here? I, I just really wanted to hear it. Yes! God damn, I mean, why would this happen like that every single time? Oh my gosh. I mean, what the heck? I want to hear once, once more. Yes. <laughs> Dude, that, that the kind of face already said, I'm going to slap your... Oh my gosh, I mean, you... <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, uh, okay, okay, uh, <laughs> let's make it once more, because I know when he's done, set, done something wrong, he just broke his glasses, so that's a bad idea, you're not allowed to do that. Okay, I know what's gonna happen, I think she's gonna come out like that. Did you break your glasses? Break your glasses. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's bad. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, or fireberg. Brody, in his teenage and adult life, has regularly set paper towels on fire on the counter, started fires outside for no reason, and put tin foil in the microwave. I'm not even joking. Wait, why not? Are you sure about that? Hey, Brody, what are you cooking? Uh. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, I do not like that. And when Brody was six, he had to be held on a leash whenever he would go out. Yeah, he was one of those kids. However, even the leash could not contain his chaotic nature because somehow, in one day, Brody set off a car alarm, an elevator alarm, and an airport alarm. <laughs> oh man, I mean, he's definitely like a demon for that. I mean, you gotta stay out of it. If you haven't figured it out yet, let me just spell it out for you. Brody was a menace to society. A menace? Okay, that's definitely, like, evil. He's still a menace, but his wife keeps him in check. Most of the time. Now, all these stories were about Brody, but this isn't Brody's channel. Now it's time to talk about how I started a fire. But 
Okay, but I, I don't know what you say about this, but you, you may never guess it anyway. But at least it was an accident, unlike Brody, who set stuff on fire on purpose. <laughs> also, all Brody's stories happened when I was just an unborn soul vibing in the quantum abyss. I kind of miss it. Oh, you what kind of miss it, don't you? Anyway, on to my grease fire story. At this point, I had finally been born, and I was about to start a family recipe with my roommate, Dallin. Yay! Uh, excellent, though. I mean, now you have finally existed. The chicken was defrosting, and it was almost ready. So I put some oil in a pot and set the stove on low to heat up and be ready for the chicken. At least I thought I did, but I accidentally put the heat on maximum overdrive. Uh, what? Oh, boy. I, I just do not like it when it goes maximum overdrive. I mean, it could burn up. Call for help! Then I got distracted talking to Dallin and forgot all about the chicken. Yes. After a while, the room suddenly started filling with smoke. Oh yeah, black smoke. Here it comes now! I wonder what that could be. We looked and saw a plume of smoke coming from the pot. As I ran over to try and fix my horrible mistake, the smoke caught fire and blazed forth an eerie orange glow. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh no. I just like Skinner. He just messed up his roast turkey of chicken. Oh ye gods. My roast is ruined. Seymour, the house is on fire. No, mother. It's just the northern lights. <laughs> <laughs> I saw into hell in that moment, and the face of Satan stared back at me. For one, one regular reason, do I basically know that I've done de definitely done the bad thing? Do they think about me like sent to eternity? They will never. Then for an excruciating couple seconds, I sat there frozen, wondering what to do. Have you heard the term fight or flight? Well, I have not heard of that word. I mean, fight or flight. I mean, take cover or fight. Just fight back after it. I mean, hmm. Basically, I wanted to fight back and take away from it. it, it especially when you when you see a bully. I mean, you try to fight back or take a flight. I mean, I know what that means. I mean, I understand what, what I know about is for sure. Got to think of it. Serious note, make it questionable. You know that. Well, there's actually a third option. Freeze. I have not heard of that word. What? And my brain chose freeze. What? Dallin saw that I was paralyzed and quickly jumped into action. He grabbed a bowl and carefully covered the pot and extinguished the flame. <sighs> I was so embarrassed that my big, strong roommate had to save me. Of course, yeah, that's your roommate. I mean, I don't know whose name that is. I mean, I totally kept forgetting what that is, so. Uh, okay, all right, so it's Dallin. So I must have an answered that one here, and then after a few seconds, this is what this looks like. Dallin. Never heard of that name before. I was so embarrassed that my big, strong roommate had to save me. I very gingerly helped get rid of the smoke by opening the windows. I cooled and cleaned the pot and very carefully finished the recipe. Mmm, so good and tasty? I guess not. Or so. I also apologized profusely to Dallin, who insisted that it wasn't a big deal. I honestly mm. can't properly explain how embarrassed and ashamed I was. I was just trying to be an adult and make a meal and I almost burned my house down. But I learned a valuable lesson. The lesson is, have a roommate who's not afraid of fire. Of course, yes, have a roommate who is not afraid of fire. I mean, yeah, definitely with that. And it basically, I, if I know, if I, if I have a roommate that has a friend who is not afraid of fire, I mean, just try to fight for it. I mean, I'll just fight for it too. I mean, if he's not around, I mean, if he's not near it, I'll just try to take it out quickly. Perhaps you don't know what it is. Hero blanket. Definitely helps up to uh, stop the fire from coming out, spreading everywhere. You could basically just uh, do that the other way. Make sure you have it on the ads here too. Or search the web. I will be more careful in the future, and hopefully next time I won't freeze. Of course you won't. I mean, don't freeze yourself, too. Just note that. To end things off, I want to encourage you all to be careful and cautious when cooking, because you could literally die. Ugh. Also, stay away from Brody, or he will burn down your house. What? No, oh no, oh no, don't do that. Fortunately, fire won't be an issue for me, because since my fire incident, I have mastered waterbending. Oh, are you sure? Well, you may never guess it. 
And I've mastered firebending. Don't do this, Brody. Don't challenge me. It won't end well. Oh. He's an Aquaman. Fire and ice. I'm sparing you, brother. I'm letting you go in the name of our past friendship. But I warn you, even a single step out of line will result in your permanent end. Break him. Whatever, this game sucks anyway. <laughs> well, I guess you can't win it without luck. You're just mad because you lost. Maybe, but at least my house isn't on fire. Oh my god! <laughs> and that is it. That's for... That's for everything. You know? Hi, thanks for watching. Wasn't that fight scene amazing? My of course it was amazing. You definitely made a creation of trying to let the animators do their job. That is crazy. And now look at that. I mean, that is pretty, pretty insane. My team did a fantastic job animating it. Thanks to Rushlight Invader and Aroa for storyboarding it. And thanks to my brother Brody for making the music for the fight. His wife played the flute for it as well. Links for them and the rest of my amazing team are down below. If you want to support me and the team to keep making these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Link below. Also, I had a blast at VidCon. Thanks to everyone who came up and said hi at my meet and greets and came to my panels. It was a blast. Your support puts me in this position and it's a dream come true, so thank you so much. I really appreciate your guys' love and support. Thanks for everything and goodbye forever. All right, I, I guess I, I understand it right now. I mean, guess it's, a, guess it's a good support. I mean, I mean, that's just all that happened now. I mean, whenever you get a chance, I mean, you definitely would have to enjoy it at that point. Anyway, this one was an absolute amazing uh, to start things off here for Brody, the one from the Haminations, not the Brody Animates one, but this guy, along with the Bryson, I mean, gonna get that. Anyway, this one is gonna give a solid 10 out of 10 stars to give that one a great start. I mean, you basically can't recall this, like, all with the fights here from before Brayden. I mean, you know, he's got a lot of fight into that one here, so I'll see you what comes next so with that stay tuned for brenner and i'll be died 18 times on the other side so anyway i'm about to wrap it up thank you for watching and i hope you'll see you again next time peace out for a while as the the bully brother of brody dial and before brayden you'll see what happens with the full compilation so that'll be pretty soon anyways thank you for watching and i'll see you again next time peace out for a while until then See ya. If you don't, if you don't, somebody will.